Good evening and welcome to One Life Left on Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Steve Curran. I'm Simon Byron. And I'm Anne Scantlebury. And we are a radio show about video games. We are still a radio show about video games after all of this time. How are you doing, Simon? Really well, thanks, Steve. Uh, I, I'm leaving my job this week. Congratulations. What? Getting a new job. Getting a new job. Oh, we already knew about this. But I don't, I don't think we've, no. uh, we've talked specific. Well, yeah, but uh, we also didn't know I was leaving this week. So, uh, oh. yeah, I found out on... Th- um, what did you do? First question, are you leaving of your own volition? I am, yes. You are. This is your choice. Yes. Okay, they good. didn't find out about that. Okay, excellent. So, I, mean, I think that means I'm in the clear. Got away but, with it again. Yes. Well done. Moving on. Uh, so that's good. Excited about that. Uh, second question, what are you doing now? Uh, I'm going to be um, publishing director at Curve Digital, uh, the largest publisher of uh, indie games on console. Fantastic. Is there any way we can monetize that? Yes, there is. Uh, we are, I'm, I'm going to full disclosure, Anne. Uh, yeah. For the next few weeks, we're going to be sponsoring the letters pages with our <laughs> superb uh, Curve Digital's indie mixtape, which was released last Thursday on Steam. It's a collection of the finest uh, indie games uh, handpicked. By the team at Curve. Um, Have we just become compromised? <laughs> We're always compromised, Eat aren't we? Eat this Dorito. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have a Curve jingle? Uh, I'll bring it in. Maybe Anne could sing one yeah. before okay. the last section. Oh, it's Curve. It sounds like a Curve. Right. That's good. <laughs> I don't know. So that's exciting. I think you need something that rhymes with Curve. Work on that. Swerve. Excited about that. <laughs> See, yes, I'm hoping to get Bangman 2 onto uh, consoles. Oh, congratulations, Thanks. Simon. Thanks. That's excellent. How are you doing, Anne? Uh, I'm good. Uh, you know, I had, the week before I had, two roast Sunday. Oh, yes. Wow. How did it go? Well, we talked about it on the show, Steve. Okay, it, but, but it, I know, yeah, we didn't very, talk about the aftermath. Well, the aftermath was absolutely fine. Okay, great. Uh, this Saturday, I decided to do something that was the complete opposite and do 12 miles uh, Twelve miles Saturday. 12 miles Saturday. Yeah, so uh, walked for 12 miles, ended up in a vineyard. It was brilliant. Okay. I mean... did you? So wh- why didn't you just start nearer the vineyard? <laughs> I'm doing a long walk. I'm doing different legs of a long walk. Okay. And so this leg of the long walk, as it turned out, ended up right next to a vineyard. How handy. It was very Congratulations. handy. Thank nice. you. What about you, Steve? Uh, I've had a good week. I've spent the day at the cricket okay. today uh, watching Surrey play Essex. And how many runs were there? there were loads of that. runs. Were Not many for Surrey, won. though. They lost. Uh, no one. Uh, we'll find out in two days' time. Cricket takes ages. Uh, sorry about that. But it's been pleasant. I also, uh, full disclosure, had a small can of Pims and Strawberry. Whoa. Uh, a wow. special summer treat. Okay, how so you if I, seem, if I feel if I seem a little bit, you know, on edge, a little bit um, you wired. You can say anything bit, well, Yeah, you, you could be a little freer with your... Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> keep the mics up when you're having a little uh, off, <laughs> off-air chat. And another thing. Uh, what happens now? Oh, no, we have to introduce our guest. Do we have any this week? We do. Uh, we have not one, not two. Uh, not one, but two. <laughs> not one, not two. <laughs> not one, not three. <laughs> no, but, yeah, two. Returning guests as well. Hello, it's John and Joe from uh, Inkle. Welcome. Hello, thank Hello. you. Last time you were on the show was when? Uh, it was a GDC, which was a bit of a blur, and I can't actually remember it. I mean, when we came in, you guys were like, oh, it's nice to meet you again. I was like, I don't recognise either of you. <laughs> I think we were on the show. Okay. I think I remember listening to back to it, but I don't Can I let you into a little secret? Happening. Let you into a little secret. I wasn't sure which one of you, which was John and which one was Joe. So I did the little surname. I was like, oh, can you just check how you, pre- can I check how you pronounce your surname? <laughs> and I got each of you to answer your appropriate surname. So I knew which one was John and which one was Joe. That's brilliant. And do you that still remember? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do, Joe. Don't try and catch me out of that. Because, what? I'm John. Uh, because I remember to Joe, because you said the job title that you didn't want to be, you didn't want read out on air. And I thought I remember that by, by calling you the Joe founder of Incor. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> See? Does that See what I'm taking me on a curved digital kind <laughs> It's like a scary trip into your memory palace. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty impressed it's a pun within three minutes. Like, what are yeah. the odds of that? Right, uh, welcome back on. So you were on hey. um, at GDC, uh, mm. which was a blur for all of us. We've had you uh, flown over specially 
<laughs> to be on this week's show um, because you've just released Sorcery 3. Yes. We have. Sorcery 3 came out on Thursday. Excellent. And Android. Hot off. Mm. Do you have presses when you publish digital? <laughs> I should know this as publishing director, <laughs> shouldn't I? Uh, great. We're going to chat to you about that shortly. Uh, but first, we're going to start the show as we always do, and that's with Anne's News. on Monday the 27th of April. I'm Anne Scanthory and this is the news. Valve has allowed paid for mods on Steam. Steam Workshop now lets people sell mods, maps or items they've made and gives them the option to ask for money for it. Publishers will be able to specify what percentage of the sale modders will get. The feature opened with Skyrim with Bethesda saying that it won't exert any creator control over the Skyrim mods. Valve has come under fire for this feature from some people who say that modders were already getting paid without greedy Steam making a cut. It was the uh, the number that made people crazy about this, wasn't it? Crazy Se- in a bad way. 75. Uh, yeah, uh, 75% of the revenue from a mod that you have made goes to Bethesda and Steam. In this instance, you get 25% of the proceeds of the thing that you've made. Um, people were furious. I'm so angry. So about angry. This. Yeah. Why are you angry? Uh, no, I'm not. I was just oh. joining in. Oh, good. Just joining in. You love a bandwagon. Like, I'm disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> what again? Yeah, th- um, did we know that this f- was coming? Uh, it was news to me. Inkle? It was news to me. Okay. Uh, I know nothing about the modding scene at all. Right, Anne? It's literally news. <laughs> <laughs> this is news to us. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I thought, because you can sell stuff in Steam Workshop, can't you? Is that by. Th- I mean, I don't know. I'm I mean, not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not clear exactly on the difference. Um, between those things i think this is certainly an attempt for steam <laughs> by steam to take over the modding industry and also presumably by bethesda to get a little bit of the slice of the stuff that's kept oblivion and um skyrim skyrim alive for so long but can't people just give it away free anyway that's like, the thing it's you not being forced to right skyrim nexus can't you i believe they can but it's kind of opening up uh, you know, if you put it in front of people on Steam in the same place where they've they've got the game running, then people are, people are quite lazy, right? Often well, at the expense so of money. So that sounds like like that's capitalism, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's where we live. So yeah. you are still able to give your mod away for free. So there are options when you go into uh, say whether you so you can um, put a mod up there for free. You can ask people to pay what they want. Uh, you can put a a nominal fee or you can put a significant fee. So it's sort of um, up to you. So you can still stick it to the man. So what's 75% of nothing Bethesda? (laughs) (laughs) What I don't understand is why Valve seems to have got most of the criticism over all of this, given it was Bethesda who seems to have put the price. They've they've taken the 75%, and everyone's really angry at Valve and expecting Gabe Newell to give an explanation behind all of it. I don't see any problem with just creating a marketplace. Mm, I think the first first thing people are angry about uh, with the number is just because the number was attached to Steve. Steam, right, seventy five percent in Steam, and then someone read the small print and was like, "Actually, you know, people get set their own prices." So this comes down to Bethesda as much as it does uh, Valve. I guess the other thing is that Valve are often held up as like shining examples of we love Valve and we hate EA and all the other guys, but Valve, you know, despite all of the things that if EA had tried and have tried, i.e., DRM and, and you know, essentially a monopoly on the marketplace, uh, Valve is still beloved. And it felt a little bit like a betrayal, like they were moving in and trying to inject capitalism into this, um, you know, loving, we do it for the love <laughs> uh, marketplace. Every time Valve do anything, the whole internet gets mm. in a big uproar about how it's the worst thing. And then sort of three months later, nobody gives a damn anymore. Oh, and everyone just joins Steam. So, yeah, it's, this is great news. Steam is doing something else. Wait, go Steam. <laughs> Square Enix has announced that it'll have its very own press conference at E3 this year. The event will take place on Tuesday the 16th of June and will be the first time the publisher hasn't used the conference of other platform holders to show off its games. It's likely there'll be big voiceovers and excitement about Final Fantasy XV, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Kingdom Hearts 3 and Just Cause 3. Uh, You can all start counting down the hours until One Life Left announces its own press conference. I have no idea how big a deal uh, E3 is these days. Does anyone care? Well, it's a time where the world looks towards video games, doesn't it? Do they, though? I, I don't they, know. Well, that's when things moved on. Well, you still get the 
TV shows send reporters over to do stuff like that. It's still, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I was surprised about um, how big announcing a press conference is becoming. Mm. I love it. An do announcement you? for an announcement. Right. <laughs> so good. Build it up. Yeah, so Square are doing one, Bethesda are doing yeah. one, presumably to apologise <laughs> for their <laughs> symphony. Actually, it must be, hopefully it'll be Skyrim 2, won't it? Or the, or oh, the next Elder yeah. Scrolls or whatever it is. Mm. Yeah. They're probably using the mods to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you're following around in money. Uh, yeah, anyone else? Uh, no, sorry, uh, people were surprised by this because um, Square have announced their press conference for apparently usually when Nintendo do it. Ooh. Mm. But didn't Nintendo last year move away from it? Didn't they just do a Nintendo exactly. Direct? So Don't know why people are surprised. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so they've got to fill it with something. <laughs> probably yeah. got a cheap slot, didn't they? Um, so it'll be Final Fantasy and Deus Ex, yeah? Yeah, probably. Anything else? I mean, the, the other things that I just mentioned. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good look. Telltale Games is working on a new game series project with Marvel. The Walking Dead developer has yet to say which of Marvel's characters it'll be using and the game isn't going to be out until about 2017. So really this story is just an excuse for us all to get excited about the possibility of an awesome Superman game. If we had a red button where there was a, um, where you could look at the studio cam here, there'd be some, some sort of reaction, I guess, you should describe. The, you, you've, you've, you've gone slightly redder than you did when you emerged up the stairs yeah, well, when we were you just... Were t- you were talking about biology. I was not talking about it. Steve was Steve clearing was it up with our guests. guests exactly, about, about words it's okay to say. Yeah. Um, some of them it's not. Uh, you did um, foreshadow uh, a joke. You said, uh, yeah. you said, so guys, sorry guys, News is rubbish this week, which you know it's always but. nice. <laughs> There's one amazing joke, um, and, and was, <laughs> <laughs> and that in your mind was it? One, a, an awesome Superman game. Yeah. Right. Do you know what? Because I'm, because I do know. Right. That that's not Marvel. I do know that. Right. Right. But people will think that I don't. <laughs> okay. So they think I did a mistake. Right. But I know that I didn't. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I the guess. The theory behind that is, is yeah. solid, isn't it? I, right. I, I don't, know what we're I don't understand why you're not laughing. <laughs> Um, well, because as comic book fans, we're furious. <laughs> Actually, I genuinely came the closest I've ever done to swearing then. <laughs> uh, genuinely. Genuinely, it got here. Got here. Oh, uh, yes. we're, we're something furious about the fact yeah. that you'd... Um... Yeah, that I would cross the streams. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's I mean, g- going to be, honest, be really an Avengers game, isn't it? That would make sense, wouldn't it? Would it? With all or of would the... it be Justice League? Well, wait, see, I'm wait going a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't actually know that much, I had to Google this. Okay. So maybe it's um, Marvel have recently had like some success placing Daredevil with Netflix, right? So one of their properties that has previously not done great in in Hollywood, giving it another lease of life somewhere else. So maybe they'll not um, use the Avengers. Maybe they'll look at the rest of the comics they've got out and you know place them somewhere else. Maybe. Uh, it's, it's exciting time to be a Marvel fan, though, isn't it? Don't isn't you it? think? I went and saw the Avengers last night. Did you? Did you yeah. enjoy it? Ah, <laughs> oh, smash, smash! Oh, oh, some emotion! Ah, oh, smash, smash! <laughs> yeah, it was good. <laughs> I feel Norman. like I don't need to see exactly. it now. <laughs> you can learn a lot from you. And what? what uh, how would you rate it? Um, seven out of ten. Sony has slashed the price of the PS4 so bad it may need medical attention. The console's RRP has been cut to £299 at retailers Game, Amazon, Tesco, Argos and Berry. But you'd better be quick because the offer runs out on Tuesday the 28th of April, which is tomorrow. Apologies to all the podcast listeners out there who've missed out on this mega deal because apparently there's something more important than listening to One Life Left Live. So this is a response to Microsoft's price cut, right? Yeah. Kind of exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you're going to cut your price? Yeah, me Yeah. Me too. Right. Same. Mm. And Very is, uh, this is Fern Cotton's internet yeah. site, isn't it? That's the one that just made, so all of the other ones, yeah, Amazon, yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, and Very. Tesco's, yeah. Yeah. Ar- uh, Argos, yeah. of course. Yeah. Game, obviously. Right. Obviously, yeah. Very. Mm. Go on there, get um, some nice dresses and a PS4. Right. Um, it's very brief though. A brief period yeah. has been cut for. Why? Yes. Why? Why is that? Uh, it feels like just. It does just sort of feel like a reaction. Oh, you're going to cut yours? We could do that too, but right. not not forever. Are you going to buy another one? Um, I don't have one already. I do want to get a PS4. Okay, are you going to buy one now? Is this going to tempt you? No, it's still three hundred quid, isn't it? 
I mean, yeah. I mean, no, it's... <laughs> and actually, uh, you can get it cheaper. There okay. are... Uh, oh, right. Louis P. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. So, so look around, guys. Do your research. And finally, the joke where you shout Xbox on at everything is going mobile. The Windows 10 Xbox app will be able to turn on your Xbox from your phone so you can switch your console on from anywhere that you are. Anywhere. The toilet, France, even when you're eating soup. There will be other things that it can do and whatever, but basically <laughs> this is useful for setting up a webcam in your living room and waiting until someone you know is in and turning your Xbox on and then seeing how freaked out they get. This is classic Microsoft pranks. That was funny, Anne. That made yeah, me laugh. I, I, I think you were a bit harsh on the news this yeah, week. Yeah, I think it was good. Did you, it wasn't... Did you, did you think it was okay? I, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I, I think what, what, what you did there was you, was you, you made the mistake of overselling something okay, yeah. right so we were disappointed by the joke but then generally speaking you said the news is rubbish and actually you know it was passable it wasn't, wasn't rubbish <laughs> no it wasn't rubbish thank which, you know thank it's you. good the very good least that. that we can hope for yeah um uh, that's good news then i guess for people that want to do that well what is good news <laughs> is if you can switch it on before you get home and make sure all the updates are working so when you get in bam yeah, can't name just make it do that. Automatically. Yeah, doesn't the PlayStation automatically download updates during when it's sleeping? <laughs> so easy, I can do what you <laughs> you're devoting my mobile phone at while in my sleep. sleep. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think the PlayStation does, doesn't it? I don't know. Mm, does yeah. the, Does the Xbox One not do that? I don't. I don't. Because you you, it wasn't in that news story. No, it wasn't. Right. In, so in the scope of the mobile yeah. app. Do you have an Xbox One? Anne? I have had one, but right. then I had to go away. Had to go away, Steve. <laughs> I don't know. This seems like the uh, an opportunity for the the console manufacturers to curry favour yeah. with uh, or one our Life sponsors. Life's news presenter yeah. or our, our sponsors could yeah. just easily provide you with a console, and then yeah. maybe the news would start to favour uh, <laughs> digital one downloads. You know, I'm not saying it would, but it's worth a worth a shot, isn't it? It costs it them almost worth... nothing. It costs them three hundred quid. Three, if they get the it for tomorrow, <laughs> just ship it. Sh- you could send it. Second class is fine. What's your address? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. One right left video game news with Anne Scamfordberry. You're listening to One Life Left on Resonance 104.4 FM. We're a video game radio show. We've just had the news. Later on in the show, we have some features. We're going to do some reviews. We're going to have a, you know, a uh, intimidating interview section. Yep. Uh, where you go all Paxo on our guests. Okay. You allowed to say Paxo these days? Now he's gone. So, uh, we're in the so li- Evan Davies. <laughs> yeah, we're also in the run up to the election, aren't we? So got to be careful. Very careful. Very careful about politics. Yep. Who are you voting for? Labour. And the Conservatives. Just them all. And UKIP. And Just the Liberal Democrats. And the Greens. And Clyde C- 
Crum, crum you <laughs> and and SMP independence and independence and everybody equally. Yeah, but it's the only fair way, fair way of doing it. Exactly, isn't it? Just put exactly. a smiley face next to all of them. I'm yep. doing it because presumably when you when you do it, you get an achievement for each of those. And as a as a video gamer. I feel the need to unlock all paths in this I think they're story. all excellent. All excellent. I'm really Everyone's looking forward excellent. to voting for all of them. <laughs> as uh, as uh, I think we're allowed to do, aren't we? Yeah. Or is that counted as... Uh, anyway. Uh, that was Impulses. Uh, no, it was Overflow by Impulses. Uh, it's from chipmusic.org, as most of our music is. Go there, download excellent chip tunes. You have a nice time. They're not sponsoring us, we're just nice people. Just nice people. Right, like having Inkle back on twice. 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 Second twice. time? Second time? Yeah. Second time, we think, yeah. Did you have a good GDC then? Yeah, it was it awesome. In a blur. It was awesome, actually. So, so were you yeah. just going on loads of radio shows? Is that <laughs> what <laughs> we don't remember? We assume us. we're just part of the exactly. circuit, aren't aren't we? Exactly. Yeah. No, I think it was, it was just, it was, oh, I can't remember what day it was, but it was like after we'd done our talks, we'd done sort of of 15, 16 press meetings, the jet lag was properly kicking in. So I think we wandered up at some time. I don't think any... Uh, you guys were as knackered as we were. You didn't introduce yourselves or anything. You just sort of had some... busy doing a radio show. There was one microphone for the two of us. You didn't ask us oh, any so questions. And then to, we came to, away again. Remember, remember enough to have complaints. Yeah, well, basically, yeah, exactly. You just weren't memorable enough. Uh, um, you, you were just... Uh, you, had you just won an award? Uh, yeah, we just won the best narrative from the IGF. Okay. Yeah, we just won that, like, the night before. And then we were talking about BAFTAs? Which yeah, we were getting pretty nervous and excited about the BAFTAs. We had four BAFTA nominations for 80 days. We lost them all. It was a great night. It was like being England and past the quarterfinals. Um, yeah, it was, you know, just everything kind of went downhill. But it was a lovely evening. It was okay. a great evening. And it was good fun. Good to be nominated? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's pretty yes. spoiled to say uh, we, di- we didn't win any of these nominations. I'm just trying to take you through the dramatic arc of the evening. <laughs> That's all, really. Sure, it felt that to way to us. With us. <laughs> what did you do after you'd been so cruelly snubbed then? So how did you spend that evening? Oh, we drank their bar dry. Did you? Good. Yeah. <laughs> we we uh, we lose awards every year, uh, so yeah, we're exactly quite experts in it. Well, I mean, statistically, <laughs> most people do, right? So yeah. you know, we're in good company. Thoroughly recommend flipping over tables. Yeah, like, it's yeah. good. Okay. Makes you feel better. Did people you push would... anybody over? No, no. I had I I I got down and boogie. Look at me. I'm 30. I used to be a math teacher. I never do this. I got down and boogied with the composer from Samogo. That was the high point. Okay. Of my evening. So there we go. So you had a, a dance off then. The dance off with someone with actual musical you talent. Broke off. I lost. Hey, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> but he was Swedish, so you know it was almost close. Okay, so after the disappointment of the uh, of the BAFTAs, then but the highs of the IGF, uh, you've come back. You've just launched Sorcery Three. Tell us about the Sorcery series. So Sorcery is uh, based on a series of 80s game books by Steve Jackson, uh, creator of Fighting Fantasy, co-founder of Games Workshop, and something I really, really loved as a kid. You know, it's, it's trolls, it's goblins, it's, it's good, good fun stuff, but it's kind of got a quirky, weird sense of humour to it. And we met Steve a couple of years ago, and we said, look, we want to we want to take this into the future, we want to upgrade this, we want to bring this to new people. So we've been working on Sorcery for two and a half years now, this is the third game in the series, and... It's it's a real joy. Just every it's it's a fantasy adventure in a world of monsters, traps, and magic. But every part, everyone who plays it says, "Oh, we like that. Do more of that." So every part just gets a bit more mental than the last part. So I wasn't that familiar with the sorcery books. Uh, so are these based are these based on the books or are these new adventures? So they they are based on the books. So there are four books. So we've adapted each one in okay. turn. First one we adapted quite closely. We thought, you know, don't want to mess with the nostalgia fan base. We don't want to add too much. They might they might not like it. Um, they we added a little few bits here they got quite excited about it so the second one we thought oh f- all right whatever we'll we'll we'll, we'll change it up original book 60,000 words final game 450,000 wow. something like that it was quite so a you're better than Steve Jackson well, we just there's just more there's just more all right there's a lot better. more yeah. I like it um, and then for for number three we were kind of knocking around ideas and thinking why is this desert wilderness what can we do that will be really different for something that's adapted from a game book so we made it into an open world game uh, and no one's made an open world game book before and most of the reviews say I don't really understand what this is it's right. a game book but it's also an open world game but it seems to work how's, how's it been working with Steve then how much input has he had Steve's been ace actually he kind of when he sat us down at the start he was like look stay true to the spirit but don't stay true to the text just push it and he's been a great advisor so he, he tends to let us go away muck about with it have fun with it and we come back present it to him and he's like okay, well, he's, I like this bit and I don't like that bit and develop that and he's such an easy going guy yeah. I mean, when, he met, when we met him in the pub uh, which is where we first met him he 
we we said so can we add all these different game mechanics it's like yeah go ahead (laughs) no the last time we saw him he was walking past us at gdc maybe three years ago and i've not seen steve for such a long time and he's a he's teaching uh, yeah he's at brunel brunel that's right yeah so um he's teaching game design isn't he yeah he he does like one and one day a week or something so is that daunting then coming up with design ideas for somebody who not only co-founded games workshop but is teaching teaching game design um no 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 it's really not he's he's, he's a good guy yeah. i mean you know he's not the kind of guy who would sort of i don't know it, it's been fine it's just a really natural source material to work with right you've got this bedrock of kind of an awesome adventure some basic mechanics and then everything you can do is you're just pushing it up the whole time so yeah he's been really he's been really supportive actually and you, you've you, so you've gone open world on mobile so how does that work then in a sort of narrative driven so the trick with sorcery is that um it, the, the whole game is narrated through text but it's played out on a map so you have this kind of lush hand-drawn fantasy map like the start of you know, Game of Thrones or whatever and you've got a counter on that and as you explore the map you move across it from point to point to point and in the past the way that worked was as it would in a game book I'm here don't want to go to the left of the canyons or right to the waterfall or whatever and you get a sense of your journey across this map so a similar sort of thing to what we did in 80 days as well in Sorcery 3 it's just from anywhere you can go to anywhere so if you're on this point in the map you can wander make your way over to that point in the map so you pick where you want to go you can revisit you can backtrack you can go where you like and the game will cope the game will just keep narrating your story wherever you go whatever you do but it's it's interesting that the technical difference between sorcery 3 and sorcery 1 and 2 isn't actually massive we're still using the same core engine and we even said from sorcery 1 that we didn't feel like it was like a game book but everyone still kind of recognized that it had this forward moving structure like you're turning the pages of the book uh, but for Sorcery 3, because you can go anywhere, somehow people have so- finally recognised that this is, this is the point at which it's taken a departure from that structure. Right, and it's doing something that the original source couldn't do. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think we've yeah. finally broken people's ability to simplify it down to a game book. With one, they were like, no, 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 it, it, you, could, you could get away with that in a game book. And we'd be like, well, it's quite a big game. Yeah. They'd be like, yeah, but it's just a big game right. book, isn't it? Three, they've finally gone, OK, we give up. We don't know what it is anymore. So we don't know what it is anymore either. I've, I've just been, I mean, so I, I grew up in the era of fine, uh, fighting fantasy books and, um, yeah, just been astonished by the volume that have, that have been moving over to mobile. There was the Humble Bundle recently, was the, yeah. tin, the Tin Man. The Tin Man line. Games guys have been doing a lot of the fighting fantasy stuff. Right. You can kind of see why. I mean, when we first got started, when we founded our company, we loved, loved the idea of kind of reading on a digital device and the, the idea that you could add, add, could add so much to that. The, the core reading experience that you would have reading yeah. a book except it would be lush and kind of ha- have uh, all of the abilities that video games have um, but on the on this device that you can kind of lie back on the sofa and and just enjoy in a relaxed way unlike kind of console shooters or, or PC like, games which ultimately you know it, it's kind of you want to make an adventure right you want to take people on an adventure that's the point of games you want to get people out of their lives and give them something exciting to do and a lot of console games you sit down you play and go this is gonna be an adventure it's an amazing world and you get to shoot people and stab people and that's what you get to do and if you're playing skyrim you're very lucky because you get to nick people's shoes and put them in your house as well if you want to do that and those are basically your options Mm -hmm. and then you can go through a menu system and upgrade your skill tree which is basically a spreadsheet it's pretty spreadsheet but it's a spreadsheet and I, i don't really want to do a spreadsheet for fun so the thing that game books, or that text, working with text lets us do is we're a two-man studio, like okay. a few freelancers, and we can produce like adventures with like a hundred characters and actual excitement and jokes and romance and adventure and excitement and betrayal and all these stuff that games are kind of toying with, but kind of struggle to get there when your buttons right. are X, A, B, and Y. So it's a good old laugh. And uh, so there were just, just just two of you. Are you do you write one game at a time? Or have you got many yeah. on the go? Yeah, so, I mean, increasingly we've hired uh, freelancers and artists, uh, musicians. Um, we've had our first full-time employee uh, has started work today, though, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, 80 Days was our attempt to be like two, two projects at once. We okay. sort of thought, well, here's this nice idea. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to write it. Joe doesn't want to write it. We'll, we'll get a writer to just do the writing bit and we'll, we'll package it up. It'll be fine. So we, we hired Meg. And, uh, yeah, that sort of ballooned. It right. was meant to be this little side project, and then it dominated us for, like, nine months. Yeah, um, and so can we expect to see more? Are we going to do a sequel? Are we going to do 81 Days? 81 Days. That, <laughs> that's come up a lot, actually. If we did it crowdsourcing way, then that we would be doing that by okay. now. There's a lot of demand for that. Yeah. Um, 
Well, we're going to do something. We're, we're going to do something else with Meg. She's brilliant. Okay. And but quite what we haven't quite pinned down yet because you can't just make the same game again. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not very good new. at doing sequels. I know we're doing a four-part sorcery series, <laughs> but we don't. We every single sorcery part we've kind of thrown the rulebook out and started again because we don't like doing sequels. So, uh, so it's, sorcery four is a is a complete. Yeah, it's, it's going to be mad. Like yeah. I don't know where there's left to go now, really. Yeah, but yeah, it's going to have driving in it or something. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thanks so much for coming in. Where, where can we keep up with your work on the internet? Uh, quickest way is through Twitter um, at, at Inkle Studios, Inkle Studios. Yeah. Um, and online at www.inklestudios.com slash whatever you want. Sorcery. Eighty <laughs> days. <laughs> Excellent. Hello, I'm Sega Badawi, and welcome to One Life Left Local News. Characters all over the video game world have just run the Desert Marathon. The marathon involves running from Tucson to Las Vegas along a perfectly straight road for about eight hours. Unfortunately, most of the runners have one leg longer than the other, which means they veer slightly off course and have to be very careful. The only exceptions to this are those participants that have one leg shorter than the other. The race was won as usual by Sonic the Hedgehog, with Tails hovering after him a close second. It has been alleged that the marathon will be changing its name to something more relevant, like Halo or Destiny, but the organisers Bungie have yet to make a statement on this. Thanks, and back to your usual programming. <laughs> Obi-111 entering our country again. It's from chipmusic.org. The music this week is brilliant. It's always brilliant, obviously, because we have excellent taste, don't we, Simon? You do, Steve. We. I mean, I, mean, I guess by the you, you raise the average, I guess, if I. Uh, uh, anyway, anyway. Like news. Um, Am I allowed to say that, Anne? <laughs> uh, no, you must give weight to all four. Uh, like musical music. music. <laughs> exactly. what, what, what are the four musical genres? Uh, you got pop. Okay. Indie. Yep. Boring. <laughs> and then the stuff that makes you really jump loads. And, right. the, and makes Drugs. Lazy, lazy. <laughs> yeah. Drugs good. Music. Good. Uh, good. You're, you're listening to those. One Life Left. We are a video game show. I mean, Ra- it's definitely... We're on the I radio, Steve. You can go with radio. Okay, we're a video game radio show. We're not a podcast. We are a podcast as well. We are also a podcast. That's kind of secondary. It's what we do, kind it's of. It's just a free bonus. It's just what we, we add. You can't be a podcast and then a radio show. You can you can go down the scale. <laughs> uh, like Toku, for example. Toku? Our friends... To- 
Toku. Toku. They did very well after well after Very well after their appearance. Good, good for, I'm glad we could help them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, last good week, you won't have listened, um, Inkle, Inkle Men. Um, we were a bit busy last week. Okay, well, we were, so were we, um, entertaining <laughs> the nation. Yeah, sure, we, we were just shipping a game, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yep, have you, you shipped a game for job? nine years? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let us know. Uh, the Toku podcast came on the air here um, the following day. They were featured by Apple, so, you know. Yep. Oh, well. um, and then they're, they're riding high in the, in the comedy comedy genre which is fine because we're not in the comedy no, genre exactly. so we're we're yep. okay with so that the fact that my joke bombed earlier <laughs> is actually okay um a correspondent writes hi ol and super special guests i hope you're all having a brilliant monday i on the other hand I've become newly single, and I would like your suggestions for games I can wallow with. Thanks. Please keep me anonymous. I don't need the whole world to realise I'm available and start hounding me. Mm. Fair Inkle boys, what games can uh, our correspondent wallow with? Ooh. Single. Single player. Literally sick. Nothing well, that's multiplayer. <laughs> that could I, be a new feature. That's, single player. That's a pun, right? Single that's player. good enough. Yeah. Yeah. If our correspondent wants to do a feature for us called Single, single Player... player. Yeah. Platform. Where they go in to, yeah, where they just try and get off with people in multiplayer games because they're <laughs> single. Yeah. That's awesome. That is a good idea. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. If only we knew who this was. And actually if that feature does pop up, it won't be it may it n- may not be may someone else. Not. Yeah. You can do it anonymously. Use a voice changer. Exactly. Uh, any sorry. Just, any single player. Game. Uh, so I've been playing uh, Talos Principle, which uh, Right. It's uh, it's not a particularly recent release, but it's uh, it's a really fun three D puzzle game. Uh, I like the I like the idea of using a really high tech three D engine to do something that's not a shooter. But then, what if this, if our correspondent gets stuck though, and because they're on their own, they can't uh, can't ask someone who's watching them to, for solutions. Oh. I'm not, I mean, you you're well, clearly well these days in, in the days someone. of Twitch, you could uh, okay. you could live stream it. Right. Okay. Task principle. Yeah, I mean, wallowing in a game, you want something really slow, don't you? You want something that responds to the fact that your mind's going to drift off the whole time. So, I don't know, I would go with Minesweeper and just accept that you've lost <laughs> now. You know, you'll, you'll just get back waiting on, to die. Yeah, you'll, you'll get back in the saddle in a couple of years' time, but for now, just go back to 1995 and chill out for a moment. Okay. Uh, the obvious game is Tinder. Very good. A That's game nice. of Tinder for your single can you, can you Can you Tinder on Twitch? Ooh. Or Twitch on Tinder. That sounds painful. In Periscope. <laughs> uh, hello, team and super special guest. Uh, writes uh, Dr. Avatar, who will be coming up later on the show. Uh, subject, nipples in freezers. Now, we're allowed to say both of those, aren't we? Biology. As a physician, I find that not much makes me queasy anymore. In fact, I have a bad habit of describing massive hemorrhages while my non-medic friends are eating lunch, frequently to their horror. That said, I found your blithe chat about a man whose nipples had been cut off and placed in cold storage a serious challenge. I nearly lost my tuna and octopus tacos. I was enjoying the lunch in Kensington Market outside Toronto Western Hospital. Anyway, it was nice to know I'm still human. I hope you enjoy this week's episode. I uh, won't spoil what the episode is. Yours, Adam Avatar. So you may have been shipping a game last week where we yeah. were addressing the big issues in, vi- in video games themselves. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awful if it... So he's given a very specific place where he hangs out. Wouldn't it be awful if it just turned out he woke up one morning and his nipples were in a freezer and so. Yeah. Someone yeah. Who yeah. That would be awful. That, that would be awful, yeah. wouldn't That it? Yeah. information to track him down. Cut off his nipples. Put them in the freezer. Be awful. I, I mean, there must be an alibi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'd be really awful if someone did that. <laughs> Uh, Dear Team and SSG, I've been feeling nostalgic this week. I've been reading this series on Rock Paper Shotgun entitled Is Deus Ex Still the Best Game Ever? Where John Walker has played through the original Deus Ex in uh, as original a form as he can get to run to see if it still looks as good as it did 15 years ago. His conclusions seem to be that obviously it doesn't look good. And there are still, uh, there are some very clunky triggers, but generally the plot holds up and the world feels right. It's maybe want to go back and try playing it through in a different way to see what happens and then yesterday someone asked me this question on facebook which i now ask you are there any games you will never play again because you're afraid they won't live up to how you remember them cheery bye robert 
I, uh, well, I, it's too late for me, Anne, uh, because I've oh recently God. played Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, and neither, yeah. it turns out, are are as good as I thought they would be. You go back to a lot of games, though. You just play the same game over and over again on different... Not anymore, now. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there's, Super Mario, there's Mario 3D, yeah. of course. That's just all you yeah. run. Um, yeah, I, I mean, they, they, they were great games, but uh, I found them quite troubling on modern... Do you know, I realised I realised today, I read a story about um, Take That's Tax Situation, and I've realised I will never go back to Singstar Take That. Crikey. Really? I just don't have the same feelings anymore. Uh, what? Yeah, I mean, you can never go back to pretty much John. all of them. I mean, it's 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 a losing game, but I like the one that stands out in my head. I guess is Tomb Raider two. Like, I loved that game when I was sixteen so much. It like introduced me to three D. It introduced me to ladies. It was so good. <laughs> it was so important to my Whoa. life. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna come out there and say it. It's true. I'm I'm not I'm not ashamed. That, and it stopped you know, there, right? And it stopped there for a few years. And now I'm married and it's okay. But and it introduced me to the joys of shooting tigers. But I just know that if I went back, like, it would be awful. Right, yeah. I mean, it must be awful, right? Everything about it must be really awful. But I remember it as being this masterpiece. Like, I remember playing Uncharted 2. You remember, uh, no, um, was it 2 or 3 where the ship turns upside down? I can't remember now. But, 2. Uh, is it 2? I think it's 2, yeah. Oh, it's one with, anyway, whichever one it is, the ship turns upside down. I remember thinking, yeah, that's pretty good. But they did that in, in Tomb Raider 2, and it was better in Tomb Raider 2. <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. thinking that, and I, I just don't want to break that. I don't want to break yeah. that thought. It's too perfect. Ultima 7 for Ultima me. Ultima 7. Because I, I, I still think about that game a lot, but I don't think the mechanics would hold up today all the way it's presented the story and some of the things they they did inside that universe magical i wish there's a way of playing it right now there's a, there's a real the problem is sorry joe were you gonna no well i was just gonna say i mean i i, I have a pretty weird selection of games that i played as a kid because i only had a mac so uh my my experience of game playing uh you, you might not recognise any of the games that I wouldn't go back to, <laughs> making the feature a little bit pointless. <laughs> but I guess I mean the, the um, it's the temptation these days is just to release them all on mobile, isn't it? Because Tomb Raider One has come out on mobile. Yeah, I think Tomb Raider it? Two has come out on has mobile it as well. well right? And the controls are even worse than they were on right. PC, and that is an achievement. Right. Good. All right. Thank you ever so much for your letters. Um, we can't award um, the code to Curve Digital's indie mixtape, uh, which is out on Thursday uh, this week, because I noticed that uh, we two we had letters essentially from one regular correspondent and one contributor. So it would have gone to the single <laughs> person. And one of these games is multiplayer. On Curve. <laughs> <laughs> Curve, Curve's indie mi- but let's do it from next, 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 next time. Next, next time, best letter yeah. will win the code on Steam. So email us. Team at onelifeleft.com. Time for Doctor Avatar. <laughs> You're needed in surgery. Avatar, you're the only one that can do this. You're gonna have to operate. Doctor Avatar, operating room dictation on patient Takahashi, comma Kenshi. Operative diagnosis: bilateral vitreous ocular hemorrhage due to traumatic head injury. Estimated blood loss 100 cc's, OR time 5 hours. Mr. Takahashi was airlifted from the Mortal Kombat tournament following an attempt at humiliating the martial artist following a regulation defeat. The excessive number of blunt injuries to his skull by a Mr. Cage caused intraocular hemorrhage and retinal detachment detected on slit lamp examination. The patient was rushed to the operating room where vitreous infusion suction cutters were extended into the globes and the blood products were removed under pars plana technique. Following this, a membranectomy and air gas exchange was performed to render the retinas immobile, and finally laser photocoagulation was carried out to repair the bilateral retinal holes. The patient will be able to return to the tournament as a spectator, as long as he is content to exclusively lie on his left side to maintain the injected gas bubbles. I have cautioned him that any provocation of the original condition will likely result in blindness. Ending dictation for patient Takahashi, comma, Kenshi. You're listening to One Life Left on Resonance 104.4 FM. Maybe you're listening on the podcast, which people can download at... Just, like, go to iTunes. (laughs) (laughs) Just go to iTunes and it's on there. Or, I don't know, on our website... 
What's that? Don't know. OneLifeLeft.com. <laughs> Go there. Nine years. Nine yep. years. You were talking about our 10th anniversary earlier, weren't yeah. you? About doing something special for that. Yeah, we should do we something are, very special. We should start working on it now because it takes us a while to get those things <laughs> in order. You were also talking about your news during that break. Yeah, you know earlier I was like, oh, news is a bit boring. Mm. Oh, mm. No, no good big stories. Uh, and uh, our guests shamed me uh into remembering that there was actually another story I was going to put in the news, but I, I forgot to read it, and so I forgot to put it in. But actually, like, let's say that was deliberate because it's nice to have a story just it to is. chat about informally, isn't what it? What was that just, story, Anne? What can you remember about it? Uh, Silent Hills has been cancelled, that, and that's all I know because that's all I only read. But so that's, I mean, that sounds. I mean, I think on any ordinary show that could be the start and the end of a yeah. story like it's big enough news as yeah. it is isn't it but it's just... but it's part of this bigger yeah and i don't WTF. know wtf i don't know if you want i can put the news jingle on you no, can say that I don't... I was... okay do okay. it okay. okay hold on ready okay let's let's go silent hills has been cancelled that's it that's all i've got okay so so why did, why is this story interesting then i don't know <laughs> Who's in charge of news? Yeah, exactly. Right then, uh, we were just chatting about it, weren't we, John? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's interesting because, as far as I can tell, like the PS4 is this black box that came out a couple of years ago and hasn't got any good games. On. Well, I work in mobile, right? Okay. It hasn't got any games on it at all, apart from Bloodborne, but that's too hard for normal people. Except there was Thomas this thing was called BT. Yeah, but that's that's on iPad, so it doesn't count. But there was this thing called Silent Hills PT or whatever, which is the best game on PS4, except it was free and it's only five minutes long and it's set in one corridor. But everyone thinks it's amazing and the best thing in the world. And Silent Hills, the game was like the sequel to that but they can de- so it's a bit like the last guardian all over again that's my understanding I work I, in i'm still holding out hope for last guardian <laughs> <laughs> but, the, so, but who was making silent hills uh oh that no now you should have written this down because i can't pronounce either Hideo name. Kojima. and the other guy the film guy El, 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 del toro del toro yes um, <laughs> no problem. well done he's a show founder <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> uh yes yeah, so, you know, so it was coming from konami and yeah. you you will know as you as you you, you look out and see all the news in real time like you're peering into the matrix you'll know that there's this weird stuff going on with kojima that he's being erased from anything that he's done previously Mm. his name's come off all of the metal gear solid stuff on the konami site um and, and this coincides with um uh the the head transplant doctor did you read about this on kotaku (laughs) <laughs> the head, so the guy, the, there's a head trans. There's an actual um, apparent head transplant going to be taken in a couple of years. But he looks identical to the Doctor in Metal Gear Solid: Phantom Pain. Uh, like, like the, you put the photo and the screenshot. That they're the same person. It looks like somebody said that this Doctor reckons that he's suing Konami and Kojima's gone. Kojima's last tweet before all of this kicked off was a picture of um, Snake uh, and uh, leaving um, uh, leaving his base. He was going to get onto a helicopter, and his last tweet apparently was, was that screenshot, mm-hmm. and it just says "heading off." Okay, and there are all these <laughs> brilliant conspiracy theories, obviously with people too much. So, oh, okay, well, obviously this this head transplant is a viral stunt for the Kojima. Because uh, he's been written out, and now Silent Hills, which was Kojima as well, Konami, there's something. Yeah, I mean, well, clearly there's something going on. It doesn't warrant inclusion in our news story though, because you know a console's had its price cut. But <laughs> but but yeah, it's bonkers, and I really hope that this is something big. Like yeah, there's something going on. There's something. Th- you, you remember um, Jeff Keighley? He he was in the. Uh, the bandages for the phantom pain reveal, wasn't he? And all of this sort of stuff. And everybody's talking about whether it was computer generated and stuff. And yeah, sorry, no, Jeff Keighley wasn't in it. I think Kojima, I, yeah, I forget, it's all bonkers. Yeah, and get on it. All right. I'm sorry you won't be able to play Silent Hills though, apparently. Well, I don't have a PS4, so. Even... <laughs> <laughs> Game under. Describe me as a man explaining you as if that's a bad thing. In fact, it's a good thing. Explaining things is helpful, okay? This is game under. So Hideo Kojima has gone into hiding and PT is being pulled, no doubt as a result of the actions of the games industry. I'm concerned that creatives will continue to disappear as they're forced to fit their games into the 21st century's politically correct orthodoxy. I've read Ayn Rand. I know how this works. When will we learn that games creators should be able to do whatever they like as long as their end products feature the same combination of shooting things and parkour as every other game? I know where Hideo Kojima is. He's staying at my mum's spare room because it's the only place he feels safe. 
and he's working on a new project in which Solid Snake single-handedly takes down the corrupt games press by wandering around rock paper shotguns offices in a cardboard box and distracting the security guards with copies of Andrea Dworkin books. It's going to be the greatest game ever, as long as he remembers to include bits where you kill a load of racially stereotyped terrorists. Until next time on Game Under. One Life Left review section starts now. Simon, what have you been playing? I've been playing Does Not Commute. Me too. Hey! hey! It's great, isn't it? It's so good. It's uh, It ticks so many boxes for me. Um, it's, uh, yeah, well, we should explain what, what it is. Do you know what it is, Anne? I've got no well, You're idea. about I to don't find out. Um, it is a game where you are given a, a top down view of a town. And there are 15 characters that enter. Why are you two looking at each other? Like, have you been playing it as well? It's been competing with us in the the charts this week. It's the game that took Editor's Choice off us on the iPhone. Well, it's rubbish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So you, um, there's a top-down view of a town, and uh, one by one, characters will enter in their commuter cars or their vehicles or boats they they go on to enter from one side and we'll need to exit from another so um, top down view and you need to by uh, holding left and right the car's always accelerating the vehicle you have to then manoeuvre that vehicle from point A to point B in the case of character one enters point A leaves point B Mm -hmm. next character two is introduced and they've got these these pretty funny yeah very very small almost tweet length little bits of dialogue descriptions of what they're up to so quite dark yeah so character one enters leaves character two enters and then you drive as character what so character one is then being um, driven as you drove it so any little mistakes or the route that you took uh, that car will take so then car two you have to avoid yourself and then car three is introduced and you have to avoid the car one and two uh, yeah it's so on and so on and so on until it gets up to 15 yeah and, um yeah i thought it was really really clever really really charming i loved so i i downloaded it thinking i'm probably not going to like this but it's it's free and it looks cute really really liked it it's got a quite clever system where it makes you pay for it yep like, i i paid for it i paid for it as yep. well because it says uh, you can play it for free there's no ads there's no in-app purchases at least microtransactions what there is is if you want to pay one pound Fifty something is like it? That. Something. I've been getting all my Google Play rewards for yeah. answering questions. Oh right, I'm on the iOS version. It's okay. good that we're covered all platforms. It is, exactly. That's very professional. We're agnostic because we've got the yes. F-com rules. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. <laughs> So, um, yeah, if you want to be able to continue from where you left off, um, then you have to pay. Otherwise, you have to go back to the start yeah. every time, which yeah. is which is also fine. I thought it was charming, funny, not annoying, very, very simple, yeah. perfect yeah. tablet game. Um, and, yeah, I, I was really surprised. So are you going to play it more than once, then? I, I have played it more yeah. than once. Oh, yeah. I, I went back to it, in yeah. fact. Played it twice. Also, uh, this is our review section with diligence. Of course, we played it more than once. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Um, I, I, I really liked it. The sort of game that can only really um, exist on mobile. It's not substantial enough to be a full console race, but it's just mm. you know a few seconds here and there. Uh, and, it, and it tells you your time for each section, which you have a compelling reason to go back and improve that, so yeah. that then you've got more time in the later sections as well. It gets pretty tricky. I have not been able to progress beyond level three or okay. four. Right. Let's say four, because that sounds cooler. I'm on level four, 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 four plus then. one. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's good. I very much enjoyed it. Uh, apologies, Inkle, Inkle men. <laughs> um, uh, it'd be interesting to hear what you, what score you'd give it, though, Steve. Um, well, honestly, I, I think in front of these, oh, yeah, I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. Better, better, so it's basically yeah. a seven. So yeah, it's only a seven. <laughs> seven. It's something seven. To survive. seven out of ten. <laughs> Anne. Hi. Uh, I wanted to update the game that I was reviewing last week because something happened. Uh, you know, so I've been Are playing. You polygon. <laughs> <laughs> Doing continual journalism. Okay. Um, so uh, I've been playing the uh, something else, Punch Drunk Absolute game. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I went to a bar. Okay. And I got in there, and it told me to take. It came up with the invitation. It told me to take my phone to the bar. Okay. So I did, and I handed it over, gave it to the man behind the bar, and he was like, what's what's this about? And I was like, she told me to, to give it to you, and he was like, all right. Tapped in a number, gave it back to me, and went, that number might disappear. It was a phone number. It said to call this number. So I called it, and had a chat with this woman. <laughs> Turns out, we'd met in the day. 
said she could remember my eyes. And I know that must be true because I have memorable eyes. <laughs> she had a bit of a chat and then she played me back a, a bit of something that I'd said a bit earlier in the conversation. I was like, ooh, this is creepy. And then the man gave me, the man behind the bar gave me a free drink and it was brilliant because I had a free drink. <laughs> and I'd had a nice weird chat with a lady. Uh, so then I went and sat back down. Um, and uh, I was continued playing the game, and then uh, I got an invitation to go and progress to the next level, uh, to go to something uh, over this weekend. So they're getting you drunk and then inviting you to parties. <laughs> <laughs> what an absolute ruse! Exactly. Um, but all of the slots were uh, taken up, so I couldn't. Right, so I yeah. couldn't go to it. But I've been um, looking, uh, watching some other uh, friends who have been doing it. So they went, uh, met some people, and they've been getting calls. So I, even after that, though, I did. I got a text from a man named James. So this is to tie in with the narrative that I was continuing to get to get through playing uh, the match three game. So I was continuing to get narrative through that, um, and then I was getting this uh, text from this man called James, and the narrative was about this girl called Chloe, and he was like, D- I've. I've been to Chloe's apartment and then I got some emails and he'd been sending me pictures of like her flat and things like that um, and got texts and I replied to the text I was like what is going on he said do not respond to this number I don't think it's secure I felt awesome it was really <laughs> cool and I wish so much that, it, uh, that I'd got on it a bit uh, a bit sooner to the beginning or that it was going on for a little bit longer because I think this is brilliant I just think that it's I mean it's Punch Drunk doing a brilliant like uh theatre thing but also I think it ties in really nicely with the game and I still am really enjoying just doing the match three game as well Simon I think we could do this or call people up and get yeah, them yeah you've got a games company now yeah right. <laughs> yeah do they're so do yeah, yeah. if you want to okay. come to a party exactly <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anybody though <laughs> this line's not secure so don't tell anyone where you're going <laughs> we'll make you feel fantastic <laughs> exactly yeah well good I, I love it when you hear people just describing punch drunk experiences though because they always sound like they're just on a completely different planet yeah. and you just yeah. listen to this stuff going no but none of that is actually real is it <laughs> I mean what? what how is that on your phone I don't even begin to understand at all so I believe you I'm not saying yeah. you're lying but I but it was great through what? the game it was asking me for different bits of information and then it was using that information in the live experiences and things so it's mental I mean I, I kind of listen to it and think this sounds incredible I want to do this except yeah. hang on did you, you say the words match three yes there's yeah. a match three game in it as well I'm well off if it's a match three <laughs> oh it's really brilliant we're running out of time uh, uh, score seven out of ten Joe what seven have you been playing? Out. Oh, right, right. <laughs> I was right. I, I, by the sounds of it, it, it sounds like a seven out of ten. Cut to the chase. Uh, am I allowed to review a game that's not out yet? Yes. So, yes. Guitar Hero Live. What? Have you played it? No. Okay. <laughs> but I'd give it a seven out of ten. <laughs> it, lo- it looks good, but uh, I'm sure it'll be just the same as the other ones. So uh, It's got a different configuration on the fretboard, though. It's got though. a different three configuration. Uh, it's got uh, live video footage in the background when you're when you're playing to make you feel like you're playing in front of real people. Who are holding up signs saying, you suck! <laughs> exactly. Who brings that to a, to a concert? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Looks all right. Okay. <laughs> Seven out of ten. I think that's a world, it's a world first. Yeah. It's exclusive. Uh, John. Uh, yeah, continuing the mobile theme, apart from you, Joe. I've been back to playing The Last Express again. Jordan Ventures, uh, yep. 99 um, adventure game. Right. Best game ever written, ever made. Absolutely astonishing. Beautiful visuals, incredible script, very, very clever gameplay. Set on the Orient Express. Fantastic piece of game art. One of the best games I've ever played. iPad port, a little bit dodgy on the UI. Seven out of ten. Okay. Does it still stack up? Because it introduced it, that introduced uh, the concept of tr- uh, people walking up and down the train and yep, spe- set times. It's real time. It's timed. Um, people are having conversations whether you're there or not. The narrative branches, depending on what you happen to have. The puzzles are organically integrated into what you do. They make total sense. It's just beautiful. It, right. I mean, it's, and it, it's really what narrative games should be doing. They should have gone that way, but instead they didn't. And like people say Telltale's great, and I quite like Telltale, but man, The Last Express is just a million billion times better. <laughs> it's essentially it's like uh, an old. 11 out of 10 except for the fact that you have to s- subtract 4 points for the fact that the UI is okay, terrible fair enough terrible. it's also it is unplayably hard right unfortunately that's what we look for yeah no it's a, it's a problem it's, okay. it, it's totally broken thank you so much for coming on the show 
Oh, it's been great no to see you again. I hope you'll remember us and this and the times we <laughs> yeah, experienced together. We and this we should go been get a bit it longer. Drink. This has been all, all good. Now, so I, you've been happy with it? Yeah, yeah. No, technical I, I, support I, has been fine. I, I know your faces. If I see you on okay. the bus, I'll know who you are. I'll remember <laughs> your eyes. Yes. I, I don't remember <laughs> any of your names, but I guess that's not too important. Okay. You know. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, so uh, we look forward to seeing what you guys can be doing next. Good luck uh, with Sorcery 3 Thank and you. 4. Yeah. And Thank you. The rest of it. in the works. The rest of it's on the way. Good. Uh, that was all right, Steve, was it? It was all right. Okay. I think it was good. Good. We'll, we'll be next able to cut off. it together into a solid podcast. It's going to be fine. Um, got, got next week off? Yeah, we do. And then we're back the following week with Jimmy as a guest, right? Yeah. Because right. then it'll be... Our boss. <laughs> <laughs> it's our boss. He's a gonna year be... of Mariochi. Right. And that will be my last ever week as a 20-something. Excellent. Really? Looking forward yeah. to it. It's going to be a very, very special show, isn't it? Uh, if you want to get in touch with One Life Left, you can do so by emailing... Team at onelifeleft.com. Thank you so much for listening. We will speak to you very, very soon. Until then... See bye. you bye! bye.